All right, what's on the bench? Another tiny SA. Uh, this is the latest and greatest. I was approached by the company who makes these things, uh, made by Zen, Zenco, Zenco, Zenco. Uh, this was sent to the channel um, by the parent company. Uh, uh, I'll put it in the link down below. Uh, that sells these things. They're they're official. These are the this is the real deal. These aren't uh, clones or anything. But this is the new model. This is the uh, 407, which goes up to seven gigahertz. There's a 406 that goes up to six gigahertz. This one in ultra, ultra mode, which is like the cheesy spectrum analyzer mode. Um, doesn't have the extra filter in it, so it has a wide bandwidth, but it does get you high high gigahertz. So. Yeah, so it looks like the old other ones. Um, picking it up though, it has a bigger battery in it. I can tell just by picking it up. It's got a, it's got a, a heavier duty battery in it. So uh, the Tiny SA Ultra Plus, um, and uh, it looks just like a, uh, looks just like a Tiny SA when you when you turn it on. But uh, before we do anything with it, let's open it up and see. See what uh, what looks different inside. Um, I just saw the label here, so let's read the label. Um, this one goes to 900 megahertz in, in true spectrum analyzer mode, so you get 100 kilohertz to um, 900 megahertz. I think the original one only went to 800 megahertz, and this one goes to 900 megahertz now. So, And then if you want to do the uh, not-so-great spectrum analyzer stuff, it goes from 900 to 7.3 gigahertz. So it's, it's operating on harmonics uh, at those higher things there. Um, hardware version 5.4, uh, void static discharge, blah, 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 five volt USB. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's open it up. All right, so um, if I open it up here and there's a connector on the battery. Take that off. There we go. So yeah, really big battery. Um, uh, five amp hours. So that's pretty heavy duty. 3.7 volt, five amp hours. Yeah, so I don't know why they put in a bigger battery. So maybe there's a faster microprocessor or something that requires more energy. Um, but yeah, big heavy duty battery. Um, and... Let's see, let's put it like this, move the camera a bit. Okay, quite a bit of glare because of all these things, but it does say um, Ultra Plus to 7.3 gigahertz. So the PC board has the part number on it. So it's not a software upgrade. It does have different, different hardware. Um, so uh, let's see if I can get my magnifier out. Read that chip there. So it's got a, uh, it's an ST Micro 32F. All right, you know what I think I need to do is we'll just pop these all off and then I'll take it inside and we'll put it under the microscope and we'll take a look at what there is to see. All right, so this is the input section of the SA. This is the uh, SMA connector, it comes in there's a protection diode here to kill any um, spikes of voltages and stuff. Um, it goes into a switch, it can either go two directions. If it goes to this direction, it goes into a, uh, a step attenuator. Um, and that is this part here, a PE4312. Uh, and uh, since it only goes to uh, four gigahertz, which is interesting, um, since this thing does go up to seven megahertz, I think they're seven gigahertz, I'm sorry. So they're kind of cheating there. Um, but it's a 31 and a half dB six bit uh, attenuator. And then uh, that's, that's an upgrade from the older essays. Uh, this is a different part. So it can go through and get divided down or it can go this path, and then this is an amplifier. This is the LNA, it's like a 20 dB LNA. So if you need more gain, you go this way. If you need less gain, you go this way. And then they can be a switch to pick out which one you want, and it'll go up to the rest of the circuit.
All right, so the rest of the circuit goes from up here. It can either go this way or it can go this way. So if it goes this way, it goes through a 900 megahertz low pass filter. That's really a uh, key in a spectrum analyzer to have a low pass filter in the pass band of the instrument. So it's a 900 megahertz SA. It's got a 900 megahertz low pass filter. That means that all the spurious uh, mixer products and stuff or noise and things in the system get filtered out and that makes it into a real spectrum analyzer. So uh, when it's in its normal mode, it uses this filter. Now, when it goes into ultra mode, it switches these switches and it, it bypasses this section, which means it's susceptible to all of those spurs and noise and all those other things. So it's not as nice of an instrument with this filter switched out, but that's the way you get to ultra mode um, and playing tricks with harmonics and stuff. But uh, yeah, they bypass this. Then it goes into the main mixer uh, and the main mixer takes a local oscillator, mixes it with the incoming signal, and down converts that into a LO, okay? And so, uh, into an IF, I'm sorry. This is the LO, this is the input, and then this is the IF, okay? The IF in this instrument is around 500 megahertz. These are two soft filters back to back. They seem to be around 500 to 503 megahertz, something like that. Um, and so the, uh, uh, these clean up the signal and, and do selectivity and stuff. So that's the IF filter. Once it comes out of the IF filter, it comes up to uh, this and uh, it will come up here and go into another amplifier. Here's an amplifier. And then that amplifier goes into um, uh, this chip here, okay? So this is kind of the magic chip. Okay, so this is kind of the brains of the, not the brains, but the, uh, the grunt of the instrument. The brains is the STM32, uh, but this is an SI4468 uh, transceiver. So this part uh, will have the second uh, IF. So we had one IF that goes to 500 megahertz. This will have a secondary and maybe a third IF where it down converts it in a radio type application. So all of the narrow bandpass filters and stuff are actually incorporated into uh, into this receiver chip. Um, so this is uh, this is the thing that makes it into a uh, makes it into a uh, device that can measure things. Uh, I'm trying to see here if it talks about any of the filters and stuff here. I don't see it. It's probably a huge data sheet. Anyway, this is an upgrade part as well. The older essays had a, a, a different part. And this has a newer, fancier part. Um, probably why it's more expensive. Uh, so the uh, 4468 is this chip here. And then this chip has a serial interface um, back to the microprocessor. Okay, so microprocessor is over here somewhere, but this does all of the all of the work. Um, so the only thing that I skipped, I didn't take a picture of it. The only thing I skipped was the local oscillator. You need to have a local oscillator that can take your income and mix it down to 500 megahertz. Uh, the local oscillator uh, is this one. It is a max 2871 and it goes up to six gigahertz. And this is the thing that then sweeps the frequency. Okay. So the, the, uh, the uh, LO will sweep and the sweep converts all wavelengths to 500 megahertz. Then the 500 megahertz goes into this chip which is a receiver chip, and then it gets down converted, down converted, down converted, and uh, it gets uh, a signal that goes off to the microprocessor. All right, I'll do a different video, uh, a separate video on the whole design of this thing uh, with schematics and everything, and uh, show you uh, sort of how it works. All right, let's uh, compare uh, the uh, Tiny SA Ultra Plus now, right, uh, with a, uh, a Siglent uh, machine. We're going to be using the uh, RF generator from the Keysight. I have it set to 10 megahertz. 
Um, and so each of the uh, uh, spectrum analyzers are showing 10 megahertz. Let me turn on AM modulation so we can see something more interesting. So there we go. So we have a uh, 10 kilohertz AM modulation. We're seeing both sidebands there and we're seeing both sidebands here. Sidebands are nice shapes. They're not boxy. Uh, so I do like the shapes. There's quite a bit of um, phase noise, I guess you'd call it, on on the uh, tiny SA. So uh, can I get any tighter? Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, so you see the phase noise and other noise and stuff. So it, it is kind of a, a noisy machine. Nice clean, nice clean signal up here. Um, so let's go ahead and um, change things a bit. All right, there we go. We have a uh, uh, 10 megahertz center, uh, 100 kilohertz span. These are the 10 kilohertz uh, AM modulation sidebands. And we see we get a, a similar picture down here. I like the shape of the, of the, of the bandpass filters. They're a nice roundy shape, uh, pretty close to the shape of those. Um, so it's not a boxcar type digital filter. It looks a little bit nicer. Um, but there is quite a bit of, uh, I guess you would call it phase noise or just noise noise. Uh, but there is a bit of trash at the bottom of the signal there. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit here. Let's change the span to 50 kilohertz. And uh, that looks like a really nice picture. Let's come down here. Uh, oops. Span uh, 50 kilohertz. Very slow update rate on the uh, on the tiny here. There you go. Uh, so uh, we have some strangely shaped filters at the bottom. There's kind of a broadening at the bottom of the signals. And then maybe some crosstalk in the mixer. So I don't know. There's a kind of an elevated floor. Um, and then we're also getting some side spurs uh, over here. We're getting an image image out here. Um, so uh, that's possibly uh, of a, a uh, problem with the automatic gain of this system. So let me see if I can manually change the attenuation to uh, see if uh, that helps. Um, in the old days, the um, um, whenever you had modulation, it didn't do the didn't do things correctly here. Uh, let's see, attenuate, let's do manual, manual of uh, 20, 20 dB, and let's see if that, that makes it any happier. No, it didn't make it any happier. Let's change the manual to 30, manual to 30. To set your manual manual set to 30 now. Yeah, so that that helped. Um, we get a cleaner looking bottom. We do have a bit of broadening still at the bottom of the filters, but uh, it's it's better. So once again, I believe the uh, auto levels uh, aren't always the best values you, you should use on your uh, tiny SA. It does require a bit of learning about what it does do well and what it doesn't do well. Um, but there we go. Now we're getting a, a pretty good apples and apples and oranges there. All right. Of course, uh, one of the nice things about these little tiny SAs um, is that they have the ultra mode, um, which um, allows you to see some very high frequencies that you maybe maybe can't see in other test equipment that you have. So I have a little generator here 
Uh, this is a max 2870. This will go to six gigahertz. So I have it set to exactly six gigahertz. And uh, we can see over here, uh, we have uh, a line here at six gigahertz. So this is zero to seven gigahertz. And right on that last line, you're getting the six gig. So it is a great way um, to uh, test things. Um, let's put it here at four gigahertz. And uh, we do have to wait for it to update. It's very slow. I'll trace it with my finger here. It's a very, very slow um, scan. There's our five, there's our five gigahertz. And uh, so it's, it's nice to have something you can see whether something's there or not. Maybe it's not the greatest measurement tool, but um, it will be able to tell you if there's a signal there or not. So I've done plenty of other videos on tiny essays. Uh, this is just the latest one. It's a little bit higher in frequency. Um, and if you're not familiar with tiny essays, go to tinysa.org uh, online. You can learn all about them and everything. Or I actually have a playlist. That's the tiny essay playlist. I have a whole bunch of videos explaining them all, how to use them and stuff. Um, and uh, not only are they a spectrum analyzer, they actually can output RF power as well. So you can use them as an RF generator. Um, so um, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice machine. All right, so this is the new uh, Tiny SA-407. Uh, the uh, model ZS-407 from uh, Zinco. Woo! And uh, yeah, it's nice.